Can you hear me? That's working? Okay. <clears throat> you recording? Yeah. Well, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, wherever it is, what time it is where you are. Um, so this is my seventh presentation on the lines of the judges or the line of the judges. And we're looking at, today we're going to look at Tola and Jair. Uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are very grateful once again uh, to be able to open your word. We invite your spirit to teach and instruct us. And we ask, Lord, that you can give us clear minds and understanding hearts. We know some of these things are difficult, but I ask that you can help me to present these things in a simple and clear way. Help us to understand your leading and providence and help us to be able to share these things, to reflect your character in all that we do. We invite your spirit now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> so, with Tola and Jair, we have uh, very little to go on. Very uh, similar to some of the other uh, stories like Shamgar, where we have a single verse. Here we just have a few verses for these two judges. Now, one of the things about Tola and Jair is there is no specified enemy. That is, they don't have an oppressor that then Tola and Jair are delivering them from specifically. But we do believe that this is in the time of the Philistines that's talked about that 40 years of Philistine oppression. And uh, not everyone treats it this way, but we believe that that's the best explanation. Now, as far as uh, the dates of Tola and Jair, uh, where would you place the start of Tola's um, time as judge? So we're going to have a Tola in 1257. Is that what you're, you're saying? Okay. Now... Um, so when we had that 1260, uh, which judge was judging in 1260? So, uh, so Amalek? Abimelech, right? So if this is 1257, we have Abimelech over here. And he's going to reign for three years, right? So he's going to be in 1260. So you can see how that works. And then with Tola and Jair, so just to kind of give this timeline, you have these three years here. That's Abimelech. And then you're going to have uh, 23 years for Tola and 22 years for Jair, right? So that's going to place this... So we'll just do this again, 1260, 1257, um, 1234, whoops, I did that, anticipating the three, and then 12, 12, 12 what? 1212, 12, 12, right? So there is, uh, that. this is what we're studying right now, this history. And the time of the Philistine oppression is going to begin where? In how we had sorted this out. So we've got 40 years of Philistine oppression. Yeah. So you're going to have here? You have Ammon and then Philistine and Ammon. Night oppression for 18 years. Yeah. So you're going to have Ammonites, right? Yes, but we could maybe consider the Philistines being part of that 18 years. Yeah, so it's going to be some in, somewhere in here. So, um, so who's the oppressor here? None. What? 
None? There's none. So no. this isn't in the time. This Philistine oppression is going to start here. So there's no oppressor mentioned here. We just have this continuation of judges then. Okay. And that's what I wanted to make clear. I wasn't sure about that. So it's going to be later that we're going to have the Philistine oppression. So here we just have this continuation of judges. So after Gideon, you're going to have... Um, now, do we know how long his sons then are reigning or judging? Gideon's sons? Yeah. I think they... Yeah. So we don't have a period there. So we're, and Gideon's going to be for how long? How many? 40, year, 40 years. 40 years. That's what I thought it was, 40. So you've got Gideon here. And so when Gideon dies, Abimelech's going to kill his 70 sons. He's going to be a judge or a king in his mind for three years. So he's not really a judge. He's a king. So this, this would kind of be the oppression. But Tola is not the deliverer. Neither is Jair, right? This is just... This is just a continuation of this history. So that's the time in which we're in, in this line. Now, then to understand this in our lines, so we take this history and we have uh, the line of Tola and Jair. So that's going to be their line. And try to understand what this line represents in our time. Now, um, we have some interesting things about Tola and Jair, just in the numbers of their names. So Tola, I keep forgetting the number. Yeah, 8439. So H8439. And we're going to put a plus sign there. And H... Um, 2971. And so those are going to equal 11410. So we can take this as a period of days. Now, there was different ways I tried to look at this. Um, when we have a line, and the line that we're looking at with Tola and Jair, there the arrival of the second angel's message in the line of the judges. So, if you remember, we have Ellen White's line, and she looks at this Sunday law that's going to be coming. And our history is a zoom into that Sunday law. So that Sunday law of Ellen White, as we approach that Sunday law, we have a repeat of Millerite history, which is beginning 1989, but really the Sunday law itself arrives at 9-11 as a symbol when the mighty angel of Revelation 18 comes down. And uh, so we're approaching that Sunday law. But Ellen White doesn't have in her line 1989 or 9-11, right? They're not part of her line. They're just all contained within that Sunday law way more. We're approaching that Sunday law. We have this history. And then we have the second angel arrive in that line, which we call 9-11. And we zoom into that, and we get then the line of the judges. The line of the judges is a zoom into the arrival of the second angel on Jeff's line, where we have 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel. We zoom into that. And we get this line, which we call the line of the judges. And it's the history of this movement from 9-11 to 2023. And we're in 2023. We're at the end of that history that is being illustrated by the judges in this application of it. And then we have Tola and Jair. And they're a zoom into that line of the judges, a way mark that is the second angel arriving. And in that line... We, we say that that is July 18th, 2020, right? I believe I'm correct. I just got to check my notes. Um, so when we have that line of the judges in my second presentation, we had 9-11 um, as the arrival of the first angel, 
October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019 as the formalization of that message. 11-9 as the empowerment. And then July 18, 2020 as the, the arrival of the second. So that's what we're studying. We're studying the arrival of the second angel's message. So this is a zoom in to the Sunday law, to the, to the second angel arriving, to the second angel arriving, to the second angel. We're, we're going down different levels in understanding this. <clears throat> so when we look at this line, the line of Tola and Jair, it's a zoom into July 18, 2020, and the line itself is going to begin at July 18, 2020. It's not going to begin earlier. And uh, so when I draw this line out here, I'm going to have a, a, a date over here. This is going to be December 26th, 1991. So this is the end of those 777 days that begins uh, with November 9th, uh, 1989. And at the end of those 777 days, if we are to count, we're going to come to a time in our line or in our history that we're going to mark as the fourth angel arriving here. So, And this is going to be the first day of the first month in 2023, right? That is, it's March... 23, 2023, right? So that's the first day of the first month in this year. So if we're saying that uh, the line of the judges goes from 1989 to 2023, 2023 technically, from a biblical point of view, would start on March 23rd. And that number of days is 11,410 days. So... But we're starting from the end of this 777, right? Not from November 9th. Now, this period of time, when we go from March 23rd, 2023, and we count to this other date, which is April 5th, 2030. So I'm just going to put it over here. April 5th, 2030 date, which we're going to deal with in a lot more detail. And... I count the number of days from March 20, uh, 23rd, 2023. Um, this is going to be a period, and I wrote it down here. Uh, I can't remember how many days it is, but it is going to be um, if somebody can figure that out, what the number of days is. It's, it's, I didn't write it out. It, at least I can't find it. Um, okay. So anyway, it's, this is going to be... Uh, if this is the first day of the first month and this is the first day of the first month, we know it's, it's one year. And I believe it's... Uh, 2570 days. So somebody can check that out for me. But I believe that's what it is. So you're going from the first day of the first month in 2023 to the first day of the first month in 2030. It's seven years, and I believe that's the number of days that it is. Okay? So for some reason, I don't see it in my notes here, but it, it should have been. Okay. So we're saying that Tola and Jair, that they're addressing... Uh, the first angel arriving is going to be July 18th. So this is a message about July 18th, and there's a period of darkness, and that period of darkness is the darkness regarding the failed prediction. Okay? Now, we also have light regarding that, but we're saying here, that for the movement, they expect an event to occur here. And when that event does not occur, a first angel's message arrives. Now, we know that there are some symbols attached to this. 
Obviously, July 18, 7 times 18 is 126. And that's the symbol. And we're going to have an increase of knowledge. Now, the first part of this is that we're going to have uh, the person that represents this is Tola. So we're just going to say that this is Tola. And Tola is going to take this period, which is 23 years. And then we have 22 years. And this is going to be the second angel arriving here. And this is going to be J year, right? So they're both taking, one's taking the first angel's message and one's taking the second angel's message. Now we had this, um, in, in studying this, we had drawn that this is a period of 45 years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 2570 is correct. Okay, thanks. So the 2570 is correct. So this is a period in, in this story of 45 years. But in our story, it's a period of 777 days. So, you know, this period here is 777 days, as you're going to see where we're going to. And that is, if we go to, and I shouldn't go to the fourth angel, I've got to go to another date. Uh, that date is... Uh, September 3rd, 2022. So this is the fourth angel arrived. I need to go here. Third angel arrives. So I'm kind of constructing this line a little bit differently in how I'm putting it together. I'm going to sort of put the line together and then we will see how this, what this means. So this is September 3rd, uh, 2022. So September 3rd, 2022 we're marking as an end of 777 days from July 18, 2020. Now, on September 3rd, 2022, um, on the biblical calendar, it's the sixth day of the sixth month. Now, I don't mention this in my notes, but remember September 7th, 2019? That was also the sixth day of the sixth month. So this is going to be an anniversary of when Jeff woke up and, and revealed what was happening at the re rebellion of Baal Peor, right? So that's a three-year anniversary of the sixth day of the sixth month in 2019. Now, on this date, on September 3rd, um, uh, what we have happen is... This 777 days are being marked, and they were noted at the time. And what was happening at this time? What, what is this? That It's a Sabbath, and what's happening on September 3rd, 2022? Colin is presenting a message, and he notes this. So we're just going to put Colin here. Right? So this is Colin. He's presenting there on September 3rd, 2022. Now, this is prior to the election in 2022, right? So he's giving some information about what he believes is going to happen at this coming election. And he's marking this 777 days. And we're marking it because we know that this relates to this July 18th date by 777 days, and that it's significant. Now, we know that in, in here we're going to have a date, and that date's simply going to be um, uh, March 27th, 2021. So we put March 27th, 2021 here, and we'll see why we place that here. But this is a period of 252 days, is that right? And this is, did I do that right? 252 and then 525. So this is going to be 525 days. Right. So you can see I, these, here it's 23 years, here it's 252 days, here it's 525 years and it's 20 or 525 days and 22 years. So those times are, I haven't analyzed them beyond that. I just placed them there because that's what's there literally and what's there symbolically. 
Now we know the 22 represents restoration. And we know this represents the 2300 days. So these are being represented in these messages. So God has been trying to tell us something since July 18th because we have darkness of the failed prediction. Now we think about July 18th as the darkness of this failed prediction, that, that that's the prediction that fails. But we know that that's not all that happens. All, that's not the only thing that fails. We have, at least in people's minds, what happens with Trump, what happens with the election. All of those things are part of this message. But as far as the first message is concerned, we're going to have two way marks here. So we have October 30th, uh, 2020. So I'm just putting it below here. So this is October 30th, 2020. And this is a meeting. This Jeff gives his last communication to the movement in an official way in writing uh, directions for this committee to look at the failure of July 18, 2020, right? So, um, so we have this, this meeting, but they already have a foregone conclusion. They know what the problem is. The problem is time setting, symbolic use of numbers, and particularly it would be directed at me personally. That is, that I have somehow deceived the movement. They would uh, basically compare me to Parminder in their thinking. They would put me in that same class, some kind of deceiver, magician, or something like that who has deceived the movement and destroyed FFA. I'm the one responsible. I'm the scapegoat for that. And so from the setting up of that committee, we're going to have uh, this empowerment of that when the declaration comes out on December 6, 2020. Now, they had prepared this over time, um, but when this, uh, direct, this declaration, in my view, it came a little sooner than they expected. That is, they were planning to release this declaration, but we had some events on the 4th and the 5th of December, particularly on the 5th, it's going to be uh, uh, Daniel Vanderhorst's presentation where he gives his personal testimony and they say shut it down. Because we have a scheduled study on the Sunday morning that they're going to cancel at the last minute. And so we know that they that sort of forced their hand. Yes, Aran? It's been a thousand days today? Okay, so today is a thousand days since October 30th, uh, 2020. So on December 6th, <clears throat> Uh, 2020, and we know that December 6th, we've looked at it before, 12 times 6 is 126, we have the 126 over here, book connects both of these, and then this October 30th date uh, connected with that, we've looked at that before. But this one also on the biblical calendar is the 13th day of the 8th month, which is a symbol of Palmoni. And this one gives you this 126 and the 22520. So these are significant dates. And so this is uh, the first angel formalized, and this is the first angel empowered. And so in this message, in what is arriving here is a message about time, about the failed prediction. But these messages are a rejection of the symbolic use of time in the way that we've done it. So we are saying that the symbolic use of time is given by God. They're saying that you can't use a date as a symbol. Right? And so, so they reject the, basically the foundation of this message. Right. Really, not just Adventism even, but Christianity as well. Um, now, we have some symbols here in Tola and Jair in these stories, and so we're going to look at those symbols. There's, there's lots of them. Um, but before I do that, I just want to deal with these other dates. Or uh, We're going to have simply um, this March 27th, 2021 date. It's the 13th day of the thir 13th month. And on the rabbinic calendar, it's the 14th day of the first month. So this March 27th has this 13-13 here. 13th day, 13th month. But it also has a Passover symbol, right? That is... 
This is the biblical calendar, the Jewish rabbinic calendar. Uh, they didn't put a leap year in this year, so they're going to have the 14th day of the first month for this date, right? So that's going to be rabbinic, okay? So they have a Passover date there, but the symbol we have is this symbol of the 1313, which has shown up again and again. And the thing about 13 is it's the number of man and the number of perfection. 6 plus 7 is 13. And, and so it can represent humanity and divinity combined, but it also can represent rebellion, right? Because that's the rebellious human heart. So this is about the great controversy, the conflict of Christ with the nature of, with our nature. Okay, so it says, And after Abimelech there arose to defend Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shemir in Mount Ephraim, and he judged Israel 23 years and died. And he was buried in Shemir. So there's not a lot said about him. We know, you know who he is, who his father is and who his grandfather is, uh, that he's of the tribe of Issachar. We know where he lived, Shamir, in Mount Ephraim. And we know, long, we know how long he judged, 23 years. And we know that he died. And we know where he was buried. He was buried in Shamir, where he dwelt. So not a lot of information to go on. Not a lot of symbols. Now we can look at uh, his name, right? We can look at the Hebrew numbers as we did with his name. Um, we can look at the 23 years. We can look at um, the other symbols around there where he lived. Uh, but there's nothing that's really just jumps out at us initially. <clears throat> um, let me see here. So, uh, so, that, so that's Tola. And... The one thing that we can look, though, is the verse. So what is the verse for Tola? Judges 10, verse 1, right? Okay. So if we take 10, verse 1 as a symbol, 10, verse 1 is the 10th day or, or the 10th month, the first day, right? We can take it as that. We can also take it as the, the first... Uh, the first um, month and the tenth day, so the tenth day of the first month. But in the context of what we're start studying here, we know that this is a symbol that we have in this line. That is, the, tenth, the, the first day of the tenth month is when they start these divorce proceedings. And so what we can say about this is this is about that separation from the strange wives that has to happen. And we know the problem with July 18th is... Particularly, we want to be vindicated. But here in this context, we're going through a history after July 18th, and it's how we study God's word. Now, really, FFA, when they reject the symbolic use of numbers, they have rejected Miller's rules, and they have adopted the teachings of Protestantism, right? They have rejected all of these things that this movement has used. We're just going to go back to how we used to study the Bible before, which is the Protestant method. Okay, They're not going to use symbolic use of numbers because that's numerology in their minds. And, and so we have this date. And we know that there's this three months or 88 days. So we can take this, this symbol of three months and we can attach it to this, to this chapter here, right? To this, to this section. Now we know when we look at Jair, we have a symbol that relates in the same way. So with G, uh, Jair, we're going to have, um, it says here, um, after him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and judged Israel 22 years, and he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts, and they had 30 cities. So if we have 30, 30, 30, what do we have? Three months, right? Now these aren't, these are prophetic months, right? So we know that if we go 30 times 30, or 30, 30, 30, that if we take those and we 
we take them as 90, right? So that's going to be 90 days. Now we could multiply those by prophetic months, but what if we multiply them by biblical months? So I probably have the calculation here on one of these pages. But if we were to do that, we would simply take, um, I'm going to use my calculator here. So we're going to take 90 times 29.530587. And we're going to have a period of time that's 2,657 days or 58 days. It's, it's, so it's going to be 2657.75. <clears throat> so if we remember how we look at this period of time, this isn't in this line per se, but if we go from the end of Collins' prediction, January 11th, 2023, and we count to this April 5th date, 2030, we know that this is a period of 2,640 days. Now, this is a symbol then of the 10th day of the first month, right? Right. But we know that, that uh, we're going to have another date here, which is December 25th, 2022 and how many days are there between this date and this date so this is going to be the date where we uh, we make this invitation to uh, the Canadian group uh, regarding studying the, this, these lines well we're going to do it on the, the 24th but this is the anniversary date and so if we look at this there's going to be 17 days right, right? So if we look at all of those days together, it's that number 2657, right? So that means this is a period of three months, or which is 90-day months, just as this is three months. And this date here is the first, the ten, uh, I did this backwards. So this is the first day of the 10th month as a symbol but this is literally the first day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar, right? So we can see that these are connected. So this first day of the 10th month, we're in this period of the divorcement. We're separating from these teachings, these methods of, of studying God's word that come from Protestantism. And that's what the clash is in this movement right now, the conflict really. Do we understand Miller's rules? Can we draw things on a line? Can we understand where we are in history? Can we become united together? Can these 22, the symbol of the 22, can that, can that be a symbol of unity for this movement? Right? And what we're going to have is these other way marks are simply uh, Collins' prediction. Collins, uh, so that's going to be December 25th, 2021. Collins' presentation, and then the 49 days later of Odilio's on February 12th, 2022, right? So these are going to be uh, the second angel being formalized, and then it's empowered, right? So then Colin presents again, and that's going to be an arrival of a third message. Now, this arrival of the third message implies that there is and, and here, too, I would even think that this is also the fourth angel arrives. That is, right now we're in a history in our movement that we can compare to the history of 1850 to 1888. We're in a history of this movement of a conflict that's going on. We're trying to sort through what has happened with the disappointment, and, and then the movement has to make a decision. Right? So there's, there's a parallel there, which we don't really have time to go into. We don't know what it means, for one. We just know that this movement is in a crisis. We have to admit that. And that we've, we have a work to do individually in preparing uh, for that crisis, to prepare for what's coming. And we know that we're sinners and that we need to be corrected. 
And so all of these things are coming together. And in this study, in this camp meeting, we're presenting this information to the movement. Now, this, this camp meeting is also on the lines in some way. I'm not sure exactly how, but it's part of that lines. We're in 2023. We're in this history um, that ends this line of the judges. Now, we always have this, these other dates in the future, but we take them as symbolic, that they're giving information to us presently. We're not trying to delay uh, you know, events. That's not what those are for. But it is God showing us that we have, we have this time to try to sort these things out. This is basically the time of the upper room, and that's why we have this camp meeting. Now, we also know the 30-30-30, we had just lined up as 303,030. We divided it by 12, and we got 25252.5, which symbolizes the natural divisions of the seven, one of the natural divisions of the 777 days. <clears throat> now we have some other dates on these lines. Um, the day we drew out the line of Tola is on this line. So that's going to be between here and here. And that's going to be March 15th, 2023. We drew out this line of Tola, right? And that happened to be 193 days after Colin's presentation here. So you can see the 391, right? But it's also from July 18th, it's 718 days. Or not from July 18th, from March 27th, pardon me. So from here, it's 718 days. And is that significant? Okay, it is. So, so we drew out this line, we noted the date, and we noted this span of time. <clears throat> So we have, we have this symbol of July 18th here in this, from the second angels to the third, and then this period of time. So we're, even when we're studying and analyzing truth, those dates become significant, just like camp meeting dates. And so we take that, that this is God speaking to us, that what we were doing was correct. Now we added some things to the lines as well. And I have there another period of 777 days. Now, this period of 777 days, it's pretty hard to draw in here. But it, it's going to go from uh, March 27th, 2021. So we're going to just take it from here. So you get this period of 770 days. And it's going to go to May 13th, 2023. So that was noted that there's 777 days there. So we have these two periods of 777 days. But the significance of that May 13th date is it's 2520 days to April 5th, 2030, right? So if I just put it in here, May 13th, 2023 to this date is 2520, right? So you can see it's from um, this date, it's 50 days further than this date, right? The, the March 23rd date, the first day of the first month. So we're going to have this 2520. So we have these 2520 days in here. Now, this date for me personally was important because my sister-in-law, who was married to my brother David, so my brother David is the one most responsible for me, me being a Christian, um, he was the one in my family who was converted to be a Christian, and he was my closest friend and uh, had a huge influence on my life. And he died on a significant date, that is October 13th in 1990. And his wife never remarried, uh, but she died 11,900 days later, that is 32 years and seven months later, after my brother had died. So I knew that that was a symbol. That 11,900 is that symbol. Stephen Jameson was born 11,900 days before 
9-11, right? It's a number that comes from the 391 years in uh, Revelation 9, because 12 of those periods, it's actually 11,900 days and 1,190 minutes that makes up that period. So, so we have this significant uh, dates, events in this movement that are giving us information. They're, they're speaking to us in some way. And, and they're telling us something about what we are presently going through. <clears throat> so I want to address, this is a pretty messy board here, but I'm going to get rid of this here. So what does this all mean? We have this line of Tola and Jair. It's, it's a line that's telling us God is giving us information to understand our disappointment. But we have light coming, which needs to be studied. That is, the message that Colin was given, that he presented on December 25th, 2021, is not error but our understanding of what was given is incomplete and the conclusions drawn are wrong. Does that seem consistent? Yes. Okay. How is it consistent? We're keeping with what we were just examining on the lines. Okay. When we look at the lines, when we look at Millerite history, we can see that it's consistent that we just like the Millerites, are in a development of an understanding of light and that we make mistakes, we don't fully understand. Did the Millerites set a date for the close of probation yes. that came and went? Yes. Did they set dates for the second coming of Christ that came and went? Yes. yes. So for us to say, well, somebody made a mistake, somebody's setting dates that they are in error and they are in apostasy, that would be the error of the declaration on December 26th, 2020, right? That because it didn't come to pass, right. we need to just cast it all away. And that's what's happening in Millerite history. People are, are, are expecting something to happen. It doesn't happen. Some people leave. Some new people come. It's, it's happening again in our movement. But what are we asked to do? If we look at the 22... We can see the foundation of Adventism, the 23, the 23 years of Tola. That's, that's the foundation of Adventism. The 22 years of Jair, that symbolizes unity. So we need these two messages. These are messages from God to us, telling us what, that we need to pay attention, that we need to understand the time that we're in. Now, I could have had you do it this way, but let's, let's do it. I want to bring up um, the calendar converter. And we're just going to put some of these dates in here. So can you zoom in a bit more? I know it's going to be hard for people to see it. And what I want is July 18, 2020. So remove those. Well, you've got some that we could use. Can you put July 18, 2020 in there? So, yeah, he started putting some of these dates in. Thank you. Um, so, you know, he puts the date in, and he, he clicks on it, and then he's going to save it. And when he does that, if you scroll down, uh, you can see that that date is there. Uh, another date I want you to put in is um, you already have April 5th, 2030, but can you put um, May 15th, 2023? Yeah, May 13. That's, that's what I meant, yeah. Okay, and we scroll down. We can see that that date's in there. Now, if you look at that date, so can you zoom in more so people can see this? Because I know it's going to be really tiny. But if you go here, you can see uh, July 18th, and 
you can see the 252 days to March, and then you can see in that uh, third column of, of numbers, you can see the 777 days. You can also see uh, the 270 from that March 23rd date, so you can see the uh, 2570, pardon me. And then you're going to have um, Yeah, and then here to the right, you're going to see 2519, just to the, on the bottom. So you're going to see, when you look at the top, you can see well, that's 2520 inclusive days. So it's, it's not a cardinal count in this case. And then you can also see that it's uh, 1029 days, if you go to the top of that column, that 1029 days. And 1029 is simply... 777 plus 252. Now, if you multiplied that number or divided that number by 7, what would you get? So he's going to show you this here on the screen. You say 1029 divided by 7. Oh, you got. Yeah, it's 36 plus 111. So it's 147, right? And 147 is 49 plus 49 plus 49, right? So that's 7 times 7 plus 7 times 7 plus 7 times 7 gives you this uh, 1029. And these, these patterns and numbers show up. On the chart, I have some more dates in there. Uh, we have, for instance, from uh, December 6, 2020, when the declaration was done, to that May uh, 13th date, it's 888 days. So that's because it's 111 days from uh, the December 6, 2020 declaration to March 27th, 2021. And so that's a significant symbol. And, and then 777 days to May 13th. And of course, 111 plus 777 is 888. We also have... Um, the 273 days, which we already know, um, and some other 252s and 525s that show up uh, with the September 3rd, 2022 date. So we have all of these symbols. So the question then is, um, what is God trying to show us here? Now I know that um, we have we have a controversy in the movement. Right? We have a, dis a disagreement. Now, what is the counsel that's given to deal with this? What does Ellen White say they did in 1850 and that we are to do when controversy arises? Are we to fight against each other? Stop talking to each other? No. We're supposed to communicate. We're supposed to study together. Now, I took a, a year off from interacting with the American and Canadian group. So from December 25th, 2021 to December 24th, 2022, I listened to some of the meetings. I tried to understand what they were talking about. Um, I did talk to Colin a few times and I've talked to a few people, but I wasn't actively participating in the studies. And, and I have mixed feelings about whether that was correct or not. I, I have a feeling, you know, because hindsight's 50-50, um, that if I had continued to interact, that the conflict could have been worse. But the idea is, if I had the right spirit, and I had just shared things that people could agree with, that maybe the situation wouldn't got, have gotten as bad as it is, right? So, so that's part of the problem. In, in trying to understand this. You know, the question is, have I done the right thing? And, and I don't really know the answer to that, right? I know what I did. I know what decisions I made. But I didn't do it out of hurt feelings or any kind of uh, callousness or judgment of other people. I was trying to do what I believe to be the best thing, to give people time. And it shows up on the line. It's in God's providences in some ways. But I do believe 
that we have to come together to study. We have to pray for one another. We have to study the light that God has given us. There is light in what God gave to Colin and what God gave to Adilio and what God has given to Stephen and what God has given to Iran and what God has given to Dwight and what God has given to me and to others. There is all kinds of light. And if they are light, are they compatible with each other? Right? And if they're light, are they compatible with darkness? No. And that darkness that's not compatible with this light is the darkness inside each one of us that is resistant to the truth. So we have all of these symbols. Tola and Jair to me is a very simple line. It's something that is witnessed to by the other lines. And yet... We don't fully understand what it means. But one thing I know, too, just dealing with the 11,410 days, we can see in there the symbol of Daniel 11, verse 41, right? The Sunday law. This is the time that we are in. We're in the time of the Sunday law. Now, what, does, what do Seventh-day Adventists think that they need to do to be ready for the Sunday law? They just need to know about it, right? right. <laughs> if I know what the Sunday law is, I'm not going to be deceived and I'm going to be able to stand. But we know that's not the, the case. Because if we are of the world, the Sunday law will catch us unawares and we'll be unprepared to stand. Compromise will happen gradually and we will not recognize the Sunday law when it comes, right? The Seventh-day Adventist church is not just going to support the Sunday law. I believe that they're going to be instrumental in bringing about the Sunday law. There's going to be ministers from our pulpits in the open air urging upon us the necessity of keeping the first day of the week. Their ideas, their rationale is going to be to minister, to give the gospel to the world. We need to conform to the world. Are we ready for a Sunday law in this movement? We can absolutely say we are not. And yet we feel that we are. We can look at other people and judge them and compare ourselves with them and believe that we are better than them. But the reality is, we are worse. This is the message of Tola and Jair. This is the message of Judges. This is the message that God is giving to us. He's giving us these symbols and showing us that we are not prepared for what's coming upon the earth. So I really want people to pray for one another, to pray for this movement. It's not about understanding all of these numbers. You don't have to repeat them and, and be able to draw them all out. But you do need to recognize the witness that they are giving. And you do need to examine it for yourself to see whether these things are so or not. You know, when we look at that December 6th, 2020 declaration, when FFA rejects the symbolic use of numbers, on that symbol of the 126 shekels, they are reiterating the teachings and ideas of Parminder. Did they believe that they were supporting Parminder's thinking when they did that? No. They think they're better than Parminder. They think that they wouldn't crucify Christ, that we wouldn't crucify Christ, but we would, wouldn't we? Yeah. Right? Because we do it in the form of his servants. So this is a serious matter. This is a work that we have to do individually. We have to examine our hearts. We have to recognize how far we have departed from God and how much we deceive ourselves into thinking that we are better than we are. This is the message that God is giving. 
We'll see this more clearly when we study Jephthah later today. And in all these studies that we're going through, God is bringing these things together. And so we need to pray for one another. Let us close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful. Yet we are concerned for our own souls. We know, Lord, we are far from you. You have given us light, but we love darkness rather than light because our deeds are evil. We misuse your light. We use it as a cloak of righteousness to hide our sins from ourselves and from others. We can speak ill of our brother and sister. We can malign their characters, misrepresent their words, all because we don't want to be people to see that we are sinners, that we don't want to see that we are. We know, Lord, that you have given us these witnesses to show us our need of you. And you've given us light that we don't comprehend, and yet we ask that you can help us to comprehend it, that it may remove the sin from us. We pray for Colin, for Daniel Fontenot, for leaders in this movement, for Toby, for Steve Welk, and many others, Lord, that you have called for each member of this movement, all those that have examined these truths and have accepted them. We ask, Lord, that you can bring them together into the upper room to recognize their sins, that we can see our sins. Forgive us. We pray for the people in Africa and around the world watching these meetings. We know they're distant from us in a lot of ways. They're distant from the events that have happened in North America in Canada. They're looking from afar, but they're close to us in their connection with Christ. We ask that you can bless them, help them in their ministries and their ministry to one another and to the people around them. We pray for Hung in Vietnam and the ministry he has there. We know, Lord, that it's so distant in language and, and geographically. And there's so much that needs to be known and shared. And there's so little time and so little experience. We also know, Lord, that you have people all over the world who that you are teaching and instructing. There's probably many people who have discovered some of the truths we have discovered apart from us that you are leading. And I pray, Lord, that you can bring us all together to do your work at the end of the world. We pray for Elder Jeff, that you can bless him and his family. We know that he's finished his work, but we pray that he can be comforted, that he can trust that your work is being accomplished by others. Thank you, Lord, for the time that we have here today and for the rest of this week. And we pray that you can be with us. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen.